All right, everybody. Welcome back to another uh, M12 draft. Today I'm uh, in an 8-4 queue, and we open up our first pack, and it's it's a pretty well, actually it's a really an unexciting pack. Um, the only removal we have here is Ring Flesh, um, some playable uncommons with the Onyx Mage, time reinforcements, and a playable rare in Birds of Paradise. Um, I'm actually going to be aiming this draft um, commentary more towards new drafters, um, so bear with me. I, you can always fast forward if you don't need the full explanations. But uh, what you want to do in draft, um, obviously you want to pick the best card. And uh, in a pack like this, when there are no bombs, bombs are what essentially um, cards that single-handedly win you the game. This pack doesn't have any of that. You look for removal, uh, which is Ring Flesh, but Ring Flesh is actually not that great of a removal either. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up uh, Time Reinforcements. It's it's a very playable card. It can throw a lot of people's math off, and um, it's really good in control decks in general too. Um, so with our second pack, there's actually another Time Reinforcements, along with um, a Gorehorn Minotaur and Gideon Lawkeeper. Again, there are no bombs, no cards that outright win the game for you, and there's also no hard removal in this pack. Though a creature like Gideon's Lawkeeper is actually semi-removal, because if you read his ability, um, one white tap target creature, that basically locks down their best creature, as long as Gideon's Lawkeeper is out on the field. Oh, my memory's not even low. So in this pack, as much as it was like another time of reinforcements, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Lawkeeper here. Okay, and we get to this pack. Again, nothing super exciting. Um, no bombs, no removals, uh, and the third thing you want to look for is evasion creatures. Uh, basically creatures that are unblockable, creatures that have flying, and uh, this pack doesn't have any of that. So, out of all the, all these cards, uh, Banalish Veteran is very playable. It's a 2-2 creature that turns into 2-3 through when it attacks. But the card with the most upside will probably be Arbus Elite. It can, um, prevent people from wanting to attack because they can tap to do three damage to attacking a blocking creature. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pick that up. Uh, hopefully the Bidnalish Veteran will wheel, uh, which is a term for uh, make it around the whole draft table. And now we see a really late Sanger Vampire. Sanger Vampire, I actually, it's between bomb and evasion. Um, some games it can win it outright, uh, but other games, you know, it's it's just 4-4 four, four flying, which is never bad. And there's really nothing else in this pack that's close in power to this, so it's a pretty easy pick. Okay, now this pack, uh, more middling cards. Um, there are a lot of cards that are playable, but you don't want to pick high. Things like Stampeding Rhino or a Siege Mastodon. You know, they'll, they'll be in your deck, they're a creature, they can block, they can attack, but they're, they're not going to win a game outright for you. Um, yeah, in this case, I'll just stay on color and pick up the Siege Mastodon, uh, basically a filler creature. Okay, and in this pack, also nothing really exciting. Mind Unbound is actually a really good control card. Um, Hunter's Insight can be good in green if you have a, anything that has Trample or uh, Unblockable. But for this, I'm going to pick Mine Unbound. I actually really like this card. Okay, and getting to this pack. Uh, we're pretty late here, so you know nothing really exciting left. Uh, Rock Egg is a very playable card, so I'll pick up that. And some more playable, but not super exciting cards. Um, here, I'll just pick up a Cancel in case I do decide to go blue. It seems my uh, black has really uh, petered out after that one single vampire pick. Oh wait, never mind. Okay, black makes it all the way back around the table. Um, a card like Ring Flesh, even though it's weak removal, it's still removal and shouldn't go this late. So I'm gonna pick that up. Though it seems like green is really open too in general. Uh, Unsummon is playable. Visions of Beyond is worth fifty cents. Uh. Go ahead and pick up 50 cents. Uh, nothing exciting here. I'll pick up a Master Thief for the sideboard. Uh, Distress and Zombie Goliath are both playable. But I'll go ahead and pick up the Distress. Pick up the Disentomb, Smallpox. 
So it looks like for our first pack, uh, nothing really exciting. We got some okay cards in white with a town reinforcements and getting the law keeper. And some okay cards in black with Sanger Vampire and Ring Flesh. So uh, we've yet to really establish our colors. It'll definitely be um, two out of these three, probably. Maybe even with a splash. Okay, so in this pack, I actually consider Furyborn Hellkite a bomb. Um, it's really hard to cast, but when you get it on the field, they either have to deal with it or they basically just lose. And we didn't see much red last time, but we can pick that and try to force red a bit, depending on what we get. Because out of these three colors, there's really no good removal. Um, so I'm still pretty open to colors. And, you know, there's no really exciting white card, no exciting blue card. Uh, Avon Fleetwing is playable. It's a 2-2 flying. And, you know, no good black cards at all. So I'll go ahead and take the bomb. Okay, now this pack is a really deep pack. Um, there's a removal in Sorn's Thirst. It's a fine card. Um, we also have a semi-bomb in Throne of Empires. Uh, it can create a 1-1 soldier token every turn, which eventually will overwhelm your opponent. We also have a good white evasion creature in Stormfront Pegasus. And we have um, a blue card with a really good ability. But out of all these things, I think Throne of Vampires, um, it's, it's a really good card and it keeps us a little bit open for a little bit longer. So I'll go ahead and pick that up. Okay, and more good cards. So looking at my blue versus my white, I definitely think my white is stronger. And although I can, at this point, I can also try to force red a bit, maybe go white red. Um, I think the safer pick would be Stormfront Pegasus. It's definitely a playable card, so I'll go with that. Okay, here we have more black that's open, but we also have a Crown of Empires, which is a great colorless um, semi-removal spell. It can tap down a creature every turn. In white, we have a Griffin Sentinel. Um, I think in this case, I'll just pick up Crown of Empires. You never know, we might assemble all three Empire artifacts. And I'd be passing some more black, but we'll see. Okay, uh, this black I definitely cannot pass. Uh, Vampire Outcast is a really strong card. Um, though we are super light on removal right now. So Soren's Thirst holds up in value a bit. But in this case, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pick up the Outcast. It's just a really strong card. Okay, and here we have more uh, white control. We have a Crumbling Colossus, which is an okay creature. And for this pack, I think I'm just going to go ahead and stay defensive and pick up Rock Egg. And it looks like we weren't able to uh, force red at all. So that plan's probably out. Uh, here we'll pick up uh, Peregrine Griffin. It's a fine card. I'm going to go ahead and hide my red and hide my... Might yeah probably hide my blue for now, even though this pack has a uh, strong blue cards. Um, just in case I'll, I'll pick up a even, even fleet wing. And in this pack, uh, armored warhorse will seem to be the pick. And a scepter. Okay, so we actually have all three empire artifacts now. Uh, I've only actually seen it done once in a game, and that was uh, watching a pro game too. It's very unlikely to happen, but you never know. Uh, we'll, we'll have some fun with this wrap and try to assemble the, the Empire. Okay, some more not really playable cards. So um, with our what we currently have here, we're going to be trying to find a lot of removal in the third pack. Um, any pacifism and really any Sworn's Thirst or Ring Flesh will be valued slightly higher. Black and white is not the best color combination in M12. Um, it's workable, but it's it's pretty slow. So the thing about black is um, it requires a lot of double mana cost sometimes, like in a distress, Sorn's thirst, you know, vampire outcast. So it sometimes a uh, it conflicts a lot with your other second color, which has you know double white cards here, like Larbert's Elite and Armored Warhorse. 
Okay, in this pack, uh, the pick is really easy. I'm going to slam this pacifism. Like I said before, I really need removal, and this fits the bill nicely. Oh, and we lucked out. Um, even, oh, Primordial Hydra is a really good card. It's basically a bomb. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't draft any green at all. So in this pack, it, it is an easy pick, uh, Doomblade, which I'll take. And we get past the Day of Judgment. This, eh, I guess we really looked at this draft. Day of Judgment um, is great for any controllish deck. If they play three creatures, you know, you can play Day of Judgment and just wipe the whole board, get a three for one. And it combos really well with Rock Egg, which when it dies um, becomes a three three bird token. So, uh, not really close. Uh, yeah, it's Day of Judgment. And here I think we're being rewarded for. Um, Picking these two colors because Gravedigger, Gideon's Law Keeper, and Ring Flash are all great cards. At this point, I'll probably take the Gideon's Law Keeper. Um, tapping down creatures is always very nice. Probably hide this distant tomb. And let's see. This pack has nothing too exciting. Elite Vanguard is playable, but um, it's not really what our deck wants. At best, in our deck, it's going to be a 2 1 that trades for something. Oromancer might be okay. Uh, it fetches back uh, pacifisms. Unfortunately, we only have one pacifism. But I'll go ahead and pick up the 2 2. Okay, so here we have um, Consumed Spirit versus Assault Griffin. I'm actually not too heavy in black right now. So I, the pick here is probably Assault Griffin. Some more late game uh, power in the air. And out of this pack, nothing we really need. We already have a Siege Mastodon. We don't need any more. And Blood Rage Vampire is not really our style. I'm actually going to go ahead and pick up an Elixir of Immortality in the sideboard in case anyone decides to run a mill deck. Uh, Stave Off is a great combat trick, so I'll go ahead and pick that up. Might even I'll probably hide a Siege of Mastodon. We don't really need him at this point. Uh, we don't have enough Griffins for Griffin Rider, but we'll go ahead and pick them up. Uh, pick up a D Demystify here for the sideboard. Uh, destroying enchantments is good if you're playing against white or green. Uh, Mighty Leaf is an okay combat trick, but we don't have room for it. Uh, Diabolic Tutor, probably not going to run that either. Uh, we don't want any of these cards. And we don't need that card. And we don't need this card. So we, we have a pretty solid uh, white-black deck right now. Really, uh, we're here to um, stall and control until we can assemble uh, the Empire, or we can uh, just simply attack in with our Singer Vampire. So go ahead and hide blue, red, green, so it costs. Lockkeepers are definitely going in with the Ring Flash and Stave Off. Yeah, so it costs down here too. Uh, Pegasus is great. So it's Armored Warhorse, Pacifism, Doom Blade, and the Crown. Put in the Scepter, Timely, and the two Rock Eggs. Here we'll put in a bunch of uh, four drops and our five drop creatures. So these are the things that are definitely going to this deck. Um, to round things out, I'll go ahead and put in this uh, Oromancer, even though Pacifism is uh, the only thing we'll be getting back. It's still, you know, a 2-2 creature at, at the 3 slot, which we might or might not need. And oh, I'll, I'll hold off on the double black card in distress in this this in tune. Um, here we might even put in a Mighty Leaf as a combat trick. Just in case uh, we can mighty leave one of our getting law keepers and block something. And then we'll put back in here the Arbus Elite. And with our curve, we actually probably do want. It's a choice between Stonehorn Dignitary and Siege Mastodon. Um, I don't want too many five drops. And in terms of four drops, we actually only we have three here. So I'll go ahead and put in Stonehorn Dignitary to um, stall for a turn. And with that, we'll add land. We're definitely a mainly white deck. Our only double black comes in the four and five drops. 
So we can be pretty heavy and white. I'll go with um, 10 planes and 7 swans. And I'll see you guys in the first round.